Hi everyone, welcome to Presto Commentary. My name is Gurmeet Singh. I'm a staff software engineer at Uber in the Presto team. And this talk is about the work that we have done at Uber for uh, analyzing Presto queries for data layout formatting and query result caching. So some quick numbers about Presto at Uber. Uh, the Presto clusters at Uber are spread across two regions. Uh, there are around 20 clusters in total containing about 8,000 physical nodes. Um, we have around 7,000 weekly active users. Uh, our clusters run about half a million queries uh, per day and uh, reading about 50 petabytes of data uh, from HDFS every day. So uh, to start off, let me define what do I mean by uh, query analysis. So by this, I mean the analysis of a single individual query to, uh, uh, to get some desired insights from the query. So this is as opposed to like doing analysis of a bunch of query logs to uh, gather some statistics about, the, uh, about a bunch of queries. Uh, this is in contrast just to analyze one particular query to get some insights from it. For example, like the, the data sets that are being queried by the query or so on. Uh, so building such a standalone analyzer is difficult, complex uh, because the first of all, the analyzer has to understand the SQL dialect being used in the query, be it the Presto SQL or some other version of SQL. Uh, it also needs to be able to handle any local UDFs implemented in the organization because the queries uh, can be any arbitrary query that is used in the organization. Uh, and also it needs to be able to not only parse the query, but depending on the analysis also analyze and optimize the query. So it needs to be able to connect to the uh, connector backends such as high meta stores, SDFS and so on to, ab to be able to uh, analyze and uh, optimize the query. And also the optimizations that we run in the analyzer also needs to be similar to the ones that would run in the production when the query is actually actually executed uh, because we want the insights to be based on what the actually the query will actually do when run in the production cluster so this is important because this will also might uh, depend on the characteristics of the backend data for example if querying some partitions if the partitions are not present in the backend data, then that query becomes a no-op. So the analyzer should also be able to make the same decision and determination. Uh, so there are many use cases for query analysis. Uh, one use case can be just to get a uh, distinct signature for a query. This kind of uh, uh, removes the white spaces and other variable aspects to create a query signature, which can be uh, used to uh, uniquely identify a query even when the query is uh, uh, working on a moving uh, window of data. The second use case is predicate analysis, where you want to figure out the predicates used to query the tables so that we can optimize the data layout for the tables. The third case is cache invalidation, where we want to uh, do a query analysis to figure out which data sets are being queried and what was the recent modification time of those data sets so that we can uh, uh, determine if the previous results of the previous run of the query are still valid or the query needs to be executed again. The final use case is query routing. Here we want to route the query uh, to the best cluster based on the availability of the data sets uh, in the, uh, uh, on the particular region or cluster. So in this particular talk, I'll go in depth about the predicate analysis and the cache invalidation use cases. 
So as I said, it's not easy to build a full-fledged analyzer because it needs to have the same kind of capabilities as the query engine itself. So one uh, method that can be uh, that we explored is to first run the query and get an explained plan of the query and then to analyze the explained plan through analyzer to get the same insights. Uh, so the advantage in this case is that the analyzer uh, can be lightweight. It doesn't need the same, probably doesn't need the same kind of connectivity to the backend components such as Hive Metastore or HDFS, etc. However, the disadvantages of this approach is that we still need to parse the explained plan. Uh, so the analyzer still needs to be able to parse the explained plan output and get the insight. This has a high latency since we still need to generate the explained plan first. And also the analysis is limited to the information that is available in the explained plan. The other approach that we explored is to do analysis during the query execution. So in this approach, we add the analysis code uh, in the query uh, engine itself as probably uh, one of the optimization stages or a post optimization stage. Uh, so in this case, the analysis, analysis gets done when the query is submitted to the query engine for execution. So this is more flexible than the explained plan is that you have an in-memory representation of the query optimized or analyzed on which you can do the analysis. The analysis can be done at any stage of the planning process that is either on the parsed query or the, on the analyzed query or on the fully optimized query. Um, the disadvantage is that the analysis code has to be added to the Presto code base the code changes need to be carried over as patches. The analysis can only be done during query execution. It cannot be done retroactively uh, because to do it again, you have to basically run the query again. Uh, no flexible way to return the analysis results. So the only uh, things that get returned as part of the query execution are the either the query results or the query event log so the analysis results have to be returned through one of those means uh, any kind of heavy analysis can impact the coordinator performance uh, since the analysis is uh, likely going to run on the coordinator and hence can impact the cluster performance as well and also there are no specific endpoints for invoking a particular analysis only uh, so if there are a bunch of analysis being implemented, so there's no easy way to just run one specific one when the query is executed. So because of all these drawbacks, we created Prion, which is a query analysis service here at Uber, which is basically a stripped down Presto server with no active components, that is with no thread pools running, no HTTP clients, etc. Uh, we run it as a mic in a microservice form factor uh, with HTTP and GRPC interfaces. Uh, and there are multiple instances of the service runs and the infrastructure load balances uh, by sending requests to the least loaded instance. Uh, each analysis is exposed as a separate endpoint to the service. Uh, each analysis uh, can potentially be implemented on the parsed and the optimized in-memory plan. So Prion basically uh, has the same uh, uh, connectivity to the backend. Uh, so it uses the same connectors uh, with the same connector metadata. So the analysis can be done either on just the parsed query or the analyzed query or even the optimized uh, query in-memory version of it. Uh, the Presto modules that we use in uh, Prion are taken from Uber Presto so that those modules understand the Uber UDFs and also Uber specific optimization so that we have a high query success rate. So we are able to uh, successfully analyze most of the queries and that uh, are given to the service 
and also uh, we are able to analyze the queries as they would execute in production with all the optimizations. So the first use case that I want to talk about is query predicate analysis. In this use case, we want to figure out the predicates that are used to uh, query the tables in production. So uh, this particular analysis takes in a query and then Prion creates an optimized version of the query by running through the same set of optimizers that the production Uber will run. Uh, after the query has been optimized, Prion traverses the uh, optimized tree looking for table scan nodes or filter nodes sitting on top of the table scan nodes. And from these set of nodes, we extract the predicates that are used. So these are the predicates that can potentially be pushed down or that can be used to either partition uh, or uh, bucket the table. So these are not predicates which are kind of uh, uh, running a function on the column value but actually using the single values for the columns or range. So in the middle you can see a particular query that was given to the service and the predicates returned by the service. So in production presto we actually do this analysis for all the queries that are submitted to the production. This is done by tailing a query completion events topic where all the query completion events are logged and then Prion analyzes each of those queries and then logs the analysis results in a separate predicate table. Uh, then uh, once a week we do run a recommendation analysis where uh, we try to figure out the best columns to sort the tables on. So this pipeline reads data from the predicates tables and then joins it with data from the uh, other tables to figure out the top 100 tables uh, based on the CPU used by those tables. And then uh, for those tables, we figure out the top predicate columns and the percentage of queries that use those predicate columns. So for example, here the analysis reveals that the table X uh, uses two predicate columns, name and UID 70% 70 and 55% of the times. Uh, then we further on, uh, further analyze the values for those columns. So uh, for the name column, we find that the value, single value foo is used in 70% of those in 50% of those queries and the value bar is used in 20% of those queries to filter the data. And then you also look at the distribution of those values in the backend data. And then so, we, so as shown like the foo occurs in 90% of the uh, rows in the backend data in the last seven days and the bar occurs in 10% of the rows. So, Based on this, if we were to uh, sort the um, table on the column name, then we will see around a 10 5% data saving data uh, read savings for the when the value is foo, and around 80% data savings when the value is bar. Uh, but doing the same analysis on the UID, similar analysis on the UID column reveals that the uh, amount of data skipped is can be even larger because the values basically which are being queried are actually more sparser than the values that are used in the name column and hence then the recommendation engine is going to recommend UID as the column to sort the table on rather than the name column. So uh, there are many ways to uh, format the data layout in Presto so as to make the queries more efficient. We can either partition the data or we can uh, bucket the data or we can sort the data. Uh, partitioning and uh, bucketing are um, cannot have to be applied retroactively because they change the uh, schema of the table as defined in the high meta store so they have to be ad applied re retroactively to all the pre-existing pre data in the table 
uh, which can be a deal breaker if the table has data fr uh, from years uh, ago. Um, however, sorting the data is uh, can be done on an incremental basis and doesn't require uh, extensive backfill. Um, so uh, the way we use data layout formatting is that uh, we uh, um, run our recommendation engine weekly to figure out the best columns to sort the data on and then we pass on those re uh, recommendations to the uh, rewriters or the ingestion engines and uh, then the data is uh, sorted on the best effort basis based on uh, uh, the recommended columns by the engines and then uh, presto using the predicate push down and the column indexing features can optimize queries in order to uh, read only the uh, uh, rows row groups of interest thus leading to more efficient queries um, so the chart on the top shows the reduction in the amount of um, data read from the back end for one particular table uh, when this sorting was applied on the table so uh, the uh, reduction is gradual because the queries that come to the table are generally reading data from uh, lots of pre-existing partitions so as uh, more and more partitions get sorted over time uh, the amount of data read further decreases however sorting has its own issues so for example like uh, we need uh, resources in order to sort the data because like everything has to be read in memory and then we need like the cpu resources uh, to sort them uh, in our poc that we run here we use hive clustering uh, which runs uh, on uh, two days old data uh, once the data is two days old in order to avoid conflicts with active writes to the uh, table and then it uses a spark to actually sort the data and uh, uh, the other thing is that the sorting can be difficult with the skewed data uh, particularly when some some uh, values are uh, very prevalent then the sorting can result in higher run times so this is also something that we have been working with internally uh, the other use case that i want to talk about is query last update in this use case basically we want to analyze the query and figure out the last modification time of any of the data sets being read in the query so for example uh, in the query shown here the query reads data from two part, two tables and the analysis returns the last update time uh, of those uh, tables based on uh, the uh, last ADL time as defined for those tables in the Hive Metastore. Uh, optionally, there is a check SDFS function also, uh, feature also where the users can specify that they also want to uh, look at the SDFS uh, level file modification time. So this is to get like a stronger guarantees on the modification time that is returned. So when check SDFS is true, we also look at the uh, uh, SDFS files defined in the table locations or the partition locations uh, to come up with a tighter estimate of the most recent modification time of the data for those tables. If the table is partitioned, then we will look at the modification time of the partitions queried in the query to come up with the most recent modification time for that table. So the uh, endpoint returns the most modification time of all the tables being queried and also an overall most, uh, most recent modification time. So how the analysis works is that we first optimize the query uh, uh, in prion and then we look, go through all the table scan nodes, uh, look, going through the, uh, looking at the last ADL time from the Hive Metastore and if the check sdfs is true then we also look at the file modification times in sdfs and uh, uh, then 
at the for all the tables we return the most modification time uh, based on either the high meta store or the sdfs so how the um, how the query cache invalidation works is that when a query is received the system figures out the last time when the query was run and then it queries prion to figure out whether anything has changed since the last time when the query was run if nothing has seems to have changed then we return the last query results otherwise the query is executed again so this is a feature that has been running in production at uber um, for around some time now and uh, this graph here shows the number of the queries that are cached every day so this just shows a snapshot for the first week of july and shows that number of queries that were actually deduced based on the previous results and based on the results uh, returned by the prion so as we see that the number of queries not run can reach up to uh, multiple thousands and also the blue line in the graph shows the uh, uh, what is the percentage of the total number of queries that these orange bars represent so you can see that we are able to uh, save our uh, execution of around six percent of the queries on average so that's huge and uh, given the uh, uh, huge uh, footprint of the presto service here at uber so the silent features of uh, uh, this is that the look back is only set to 24 hours so uh, we don't uh, try to look beyond that in order to give the queries of more chance to execute also a query is uh, a deduped only once and it won't be uh, uh, no query will be deduped to a already deduped query so that we guarantee that uh, each query will have a chance to run at least once uh, after a 24 hour period in a 24 hour period and also we have the option to look at only the SDF HMS or the SDFS file times. So we, uh, um, based on the importance of the query, we can use the SDFS file times as well to be more conservative on the results that we return. Uh, of course, like the analysis has to bypass to do ETL kind of queries where tables is being inserted, data is being inserted into the tables. We don't want to dedupe those queries and also the query similarity needs to exclude moving windows so this is also another use case why analysis is important because two queries might look very similar but may be working on moving data so we need to exclude those queries as well to summarize like we feel there is a need for a lightweight project to uh, um, for specific analysis to be done on Presto queries, this analysis should be doable on the fully optimized version of the query. Uh, there should be separate endpoints that can be defined for each type of analysis. The analysis should use the current Presto modules as library as they are being developed in the open source. And uh, it will be great to have like a public library of different query analysis so that the whole community can benefit from it. Uh, thank you very much for attending this talk.